we've got Lynn sitting here with us now. And uh, what, what do you think about ladies playing in open competitions? I mean, we've seen success, Lynn herself done well, Anne Roberts and Nicola Dalby, Karen Johnston. What, what do you think of open tournaments with ladies playing in them now? Well, I don't mind. I mean, the, the only difference is that <laughs> some of the tournaments do stipulate men only, don't they? Which that's is right. fair enough. I mean, that, that's up to them. But if it's an open tournament, then obviously they're entitled to join. That's right. I mean, do you want to come in, Lynn, and say anything on that? Um, <laughs> good evening, Brian. Hello, Lynn. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been uh, been very uh, privileged, like like a lot of players, to have uh, played Brian a time or two. And uh, I think the last time uh, Brian was probably in the what was to become the final Bass Masters, if you recall. It was, it was, really excellent, it? It was that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, we had a, a good tussle. Sort of me coming out second, uh, second oh, best, unfortunately, well, no. but. Um, that, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, my own personal view, really, is that, uh, and possibly the likes of, of Anne Roberts, Karen Johnston, uh, and myself are probably in the minority. Um, if ladies choose to play in open events, you, you pay your money and you take your chance. The uh, the biggest thing that I don't agree with um, in some open events is actually giving ladies who progress the furthest in the event extra prize money. Well, that, um, that happened at Stockport Park. That's right. Yeah, I, I mean. That's, that's Realistic, that's scandalous. Really. It, it is, yeah. I, I think that's that's appalling, to be honest. And uh, you know, you pay the same entry fee and, and you take your chance. I mean, uh, would you agree with that? Well, I agree entirely. I think I made a point about it. I mentioned it to the organisers when I was there once because I think one of the times I was in, there was only about eight ladies in it. Mm. So they were having a tournament between themselves for about hundred pound. Yeah. Apart from what else, else they got out of it, and we were in a the situation then we had to win about four or five games to get hundred pounds. Yeah. Which was right. a crazy situation because uh, I think there's only about seven or eight women in it. Yeah. I yeah. mean if, if they're gonna join open competitions which I have no complaints at all with, then they should be treated like similar to the men. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean we just remind everyone listening that we're speaking to, to Brian Duncan. He's now been on the programme for the past half an hour. I think he's definitely good at the pub, but we're going to keep him on here a bit longer. We've nailed it. We've nailed him down there. Um, I'll not spend as much as I stop on here. No, you'll still you'll still have that six months, Brian. So you'll be all right. Um, if, if the going back to that situation, just talking about the ladies, I quite agree with you on the um, um, on that particular one in Stockport. I think the particular year, Lynn actually lost in the qualifying round and had one hundred pounds, and you and I qualified. And I think we got fifty pounds. You know, and as I say, that, uh, that that is wrong, isn't it, really, Brian? I think. Well, it's wrong, really, because there was only about seven or eight ladies in it. So they actually played a tournament for, for you know, in fact, realistically, uh, whoever went the furthest, I mean, if somebody probably, I don't know whether it would happen or not, but if somebody got 20 and somebody got 15, would the person who got 20 get £100? That's right, yeah. So they actually scored more chance than the rest of them. All right, they probably lost in the same round, but. If they want to be giving the money out to the to the lady that goes the furthest, then uh, you could have a situation with a lady who gets twenty and lost in the first round could finish all your hundred pounds. That's right. Yeah. Which is doesn't uh, if, if they're going to be in the men's competitions or in the open competition, then realistically they should be treated the same as the men. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll put you on the spot now, Brian. Then who do you think's the best lady bowler you've ever seen? <laughs> Enough talk about the ladies. We don't want to get them involved too much, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian's a very good friend of mine, aren't you, Brian? I am. Uh, <laughs> just that's, why I'm that's why I'm careful what I say. <laughs> <laughs> just going back to the support, it, if, if you could change anything in the game at the moment, what, what do you think you'd be, Brian? Well, I've always said, Mel, it, it, from a playing point of view, if I could change any rule, the rule I would change would be the, would say, send in your ball before the jack stops. I mean, if you get somebody who never sends the, the ball before the jack, so well, they'll never lose a ball. I 
and, and if you send your ball before the jack stop, the jack goes off the green, then you lose a ball. So you penalise. I, mean, right. I, I think the panel rules, like two throws of the jack, is a great rule. Because it gives you a chance to, to try and make a mark where you want to go. That's right, yeah. Do you think that'll ever get introduced to British Grand No, I don't, I don't think it'll ever get introduced. No, I, 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 think, I think you're on a loser with that one, Brian, at the moment, yeah. I might be on a loser with the other one about uh, I think the jack stop because a lot of time there's a lot of people send the ball before the jack stops, especially when the greens are running. Yes. So the jack's just trickling along, yeah. isn't it? Well, we've, I've been to a final today, you, you're probably not aware, but it was West Brom finals today and Gary Ellis had just won it, he beat um, Graham Wilson in the final. Yeah. Uh, and on the third end there, um, Graham had led out the jack near the edge of the green and, and played a real good bowl, 18 inch short, and as Gary's about to deliver, the jack fell off. Yeah. But, you know, did they still class that as the jack was still moving? You know. Well, they still do it, aren't they? Yeah. But of course, Gary and Gary would never claim the ball; they just get on. Which I is, don't think Gary would claim the ball. Which, would he? which was a sporting thing, <coughs> sporting thing to do, you know. Well, I don't think, well, I don't think. I mean, I don't know, but I don't think Gary would claim it. Oh no, there wasn't. They just, they just, they just carried on. Well, that, that, that's yeah. most of ninety-nine percent of the top players, Mel. As you probably know yourself, the, the genuine players, uh, and. They, they, they play the game in the right spirit. They play hard and play to win, yeah. They all is, want to win. Everybody wants to win. Right. If, you, <coughs> if you don't want to win, then, then you're not going to win because you, you're not competitive enough. That's right. But um, we're just talking about one thing. Uh, you, we mentioned about you winning the Waterloo five times, Brian. Um, people see more of you these days at uh, the side of the green doing betting. Do you think we'll ever see you playing in a competition again? <coughs> Uh, I don't know. I just go and I just enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy watching the bowling and going. So I don't know. I might have to do it again. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't like to say. Yeah. It would be. It'd be nice to see you in the competition again, bro. Uh, I probably enjoy it really. You mm. know, because I really enjoy playing on the waterway. So you know, I don't know. I'll have a think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you think oh, it'd be nice to see you playing in it? I have to think quick, really, because I think it's down to 512 this year, isn't it? Down to 512. Yeah. Mm, so people are probably clamouring to get in, aren't they? Yeah, I, I was up there yesterday in the mixed pairs, and uh, I know it's filling up quite quickly. Mm. You know, so um, yeah, it'd be nice if we could see you in that again, Brian. I'm sure everybody there, and I'm sure that um, if you was in the final day, there'd be a few less empty seats than there's been the last few years as well. Uh, I've just I've just been told they're saving a place for you, Brian. There's a message coming on the screen. Saving a place for you. Yeah. Okay. Where does that come from? I don't know where that's come from. Well, some, one, one, of the, one of the listeners has put a message up uh, on there, but he's also said, you better be quick, because the spring one's nearly full up. But they could put you on the reserve list. Oh, right. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs>